The first one that I want to kind of show is Kismet. So Kismet has gone through multiple evolutions and it's something that is like, I would consider to be like a wireless intelligence or like a signals intelligence platform that lets you get very interesting information about wireless devices around you. So it also has a number of built-in uh, like alerts that are looking for very common Wi-Fi attacks. So as a signals intelligence tool, it is also capable of war driving. So if you're running Kismet and you add a GPS unit, then boom, you suddenly have the ability to record everything uh, very on a very minute uh, scale. So that means you can record Bluetooth devices, you can record people's uh, you know Wi-Fi. Uh, clients, like their cell phones and stuff, whereas there is a way to do this with the devices we were talking about before, the microcontrollers. It just means that you're not able to typically record as much detail about these sorts of devices. Um, so it is possible to do war driving on a smaller platform, but I find that Kismet, it really shines because there's built-in analytics and you can really drill down on what a specific device is doing. Would you use a Raspberry Pi as you're doing war driving? Would you just take your Mac or...? Ah, depends on the platform. So if I'm war flying, then Alex and I recently did a video on how you can use an ESP8266 and like a, a $3 little GPS unit that's connected to it, plus an SD card uh, to fly around and do war driving. And we were actually able to geolocate a single person's device as they were walking around like a really big park. When you say flying around, are you in a plane or are you in a drone? What do you mean? Yeah, so uh, a little DJI Mini 2 is what we're flying around with. And being able to attach like a super, super small device to the bottom of that and fly around is really, really cool. But you don't get as much detail as you would with a Raspberry Pi. So if I was driving around, I would say a Raspberry Pi combined with a USB GPS unit is by far the easiest way to get started with, with war driving. There's no like soldering or attaching the way that you would with our little like drone flying thing. So for a beginner, a Raspberry Pi with just a very, very simple, very cheap USB based uh, GPS unit um, is the easiest thing to do. The Raspberry Pi typically supports Bluetooth as well, means that you can also start doing things like tracking vehicles by, you know, their, their connecting Bluetooth or, or some of these other things that are very easy to track, but a little microcontroller wouldn't be able to do. You said you got videos on those topics, right? Yep, we have videos on using the microcontroller to do war flying and actually track the location of a device. And we also have using a Raspberry Pi as a war driving or war flying tool. The main uh, Raspberry Pis you would see, like the Raspberry Pi 3, Raspberry Pi 4, like they will uh, support just having their own internal card go into monitor mode and do a lot of the tasks we're gonna cover today. But the Raspberry Pi 400 doesn't, which is another reason why I don't like it that much. But we're, we're using it as our example today. So let's go ahead and first take a look at the wireless cards that are available. I can use IPA or I actually prefer IF config. We can see that we have the internal WLAN zero, but we also have the one that we just plugged in. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna do sudo airmon ng start and then paste. And what I'm doing here is I'm taking the wireless network adapter and I'm putting it into monitor mode. So it's gonna stop listening for wireless networks to join and instead it's gonna do what I say to do. All right, this is now in the proper mode, so we can do sudo kismet, and it's gonna hate that. It doesn't like it when you when you sudo it, but I like to sudo things because I like them to work when we do demos, so that's what we're gonna do. For anybody who's used to the old version of kismet, it was command line only, so like a big string of like kind of characters would be kind of going through, but that's not the way it works anymore. Now it has a web interface, and that web interface is really cool and interesting. We're gonna try to open it up on the Raspberry Pi, but actually, if I, if I don't want to, there's a very cool trick here that I kind of want to show off. Let me see if I can do that. So if I do uh, IF config again, I can see that I am actually connected over internet here. So if I were to type in 192.168.0200 and then this port over here, I could actually access this from any different device on the same network. So if I have my Raspberry Pi running and doing capturing and stuff and it's being slow, like my Raspberry Pi is being slow, I can go over to my Mac OS system and if I go to Firefox, go to 192.168.0200 and then the port number 2501. Boom, look at that. So I'm actually accessing my Raspberry Pi over the network through this really clean web interface. So let's go ahead and add a source so that we can actually start pulling data. So I'm gonna to go to the menu here. I'm going to go to data sources, and then I should have a bunch of built-in data sources that I can just start capturing from. Let's do something weird. So we have some available interfaces like Bluetooth. So that's one that I wasn't even planning on capturing, but if we enable the source, so it's now starting to display things. I'm gonna show all devices, and I can see these are all Bluetooth devices. It's actually picking up the names of some of them. It's attempting to identify the manufacturer, and I can zoom in to see more individual information. And if I wanna click on one of these Bluetooth devices, I can click on them 
and see more information about it. You know, like I can see it's made by Ubiquity, it's a BLE, I can see the channel, the frequency, all this interesting stuff, as well as a packet graph. It's a really interesting way of being able to take a peek into the wireless spectrum. So right now we're just looking at Bluetooth. Let's go ahead and add Wi-Fi as well. So I'm gonna go to the data sources and we're gonna select our wireless network adapter that we just put into monitor mode. I'm gonna select this, I'm gonna click enable source, and then boom, we now have tons of Wi-Fi data that's coming in and I'm going to start filtering this for just Wi-Fi. So we can just see things that are more relevant. Now we have Wi-Fi access points and these are all graphed in ways that we can make customized. So if I wanna see only things that are very close to us, I can do the sorting by signal strength and see, oh, this is outside. This is my outside project that's broadcasting the current temperature as a Wi-Fi network. And I'm able to see that that's relatively close by signal strength. And I can see that that's made by Espressif, which is the microcontroller I'm using to run this project in our backyard. So I'm able to very quickly learn information that, okay, it's not connected to another access point. It's its own client. It doesn't have security. It is using an expressive microcontroller to make it. That's a lot of information to be able to get from just starting up your Wi-Fi card and listening in. So as we get to the more complicated things, we can look at some of these networks that are being broadcast and start learning about them. So if I choose to click on one of these networks here, I can learn more information about it. So I can see the channel that they're on, I can see how much data they're exchanging. And I'll click on this one and I can see it's called Nexus 5. I can see information about what frequency it's on. But if I click on Wi-Fi, this is where things start getting kind of cool. So I can see that it's probed for other SSIDs. So it's, it's looked around for other networks. I can see it has a fingerprint for its beacons. And right now it looks like there are associated clients. So this means that I can basically see that there's shared hardware uptime. So that means that this is actually broadcasting two access points at the same time from the same device. So that's actually true. This is a router that's broadcasting on two uh, different antennas. So that's really cool that I can group together two access points that might actually be different by studying their packet uptime. So what this means, and there's a little question mark here that explains it, is Wi-Fi access points advertise a high precision timestamp in beacons. Multiple devices with similar timestamps are, are typically part of the same physical access point. That could be multiple different uh, like na Wi-Fi names, but it's actually the same router that's broadcasting them. And that's really cool that you can use this tool to identify that. So then we can see associated clients. So we can see every device that is currently connected to that access point, and we can see what it is. So we can see an Intel Corporation device. We can see a Vizio. We can see a another Intel, and we can then break out and start analyzing any of these individual networks that we want to learn more about. Let's say that we want to learn more about, as I keep going through these, oh, an Apple device. Yeah, let's let's see this. So we now have identified an Apple device, and I want to know more about this Apple device that is connected to our Nexus 5 network. So I'm going to click on Client Details, and it opens up a new window that lets me start probing into what this client has been up to. So I can also go here and see different access points that it has joined in the past. So I can see here, it's actually a member of two different networks. It has switched between these two different access points in the past. So I know that this individual Apple device has the password for both of these networks stored inside of it because it's been observed connecting to uh, both of them. Isn't that crazy that like nice. as somebody like that, that yeah, you can just see into this invisible spectrum and start understanding the relationships between these different clients and access points. So instead of just having like it all via via text and trying to like see which ones line up with, with which ones, this makes it so much of a, a more rich interface to understand that sort of thing. It also comes with alerts. And this is where you can see, for example, alerts about like a, a Hack5 product running nearby. I scared myself so badly using Kismet one time when I plugged in a Wi-Fi pineapple and it automatically started running a Karma attack because that's one of the attacks that this automatically detects. So currently, it's just telling me like, you shouldn't use this as root. I told you it would complain. But if I actually start running an attack, then I should be able to detect it using Kismet and get an alert that something sketchy is happening. So I'm gonna take the Wi-Fi nugget and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna target one of these networks first by scanning and then by selecting the access point. And I'm going to start kicking a specific device off of the network. Now, if Kismet's doing its job, it should generate an alert and tell me that some nefarious activity is going on. A known attack is underway. So let's say I'm some kid that has a deauthor wristwatch. I have selected an access point to attack and I am now gonna go for it. So I've selected the attack, I have deauthentication selected, and I'm firing. 
So at this point, I'm sending deauthentication attacks, and this is very noisy. This is an attack that's super easy for uh, most people to detect because it involves sending a bunch of like packets that are not typically exchanged in a network if everything is going fine. There we go, we got an alert. So that didn't take very long. Access point, blah, 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 broadcast deauthentication or disassociation of all clients. Either an AP is shutting down or this is indicative of a possible denial of service attack. That's because it is. I am denying service. So let's go ahead and try another one. I'm gonna start trying a beacon frame attack. So what that's gonna do is it is actually going to broadcast a bunch of different access points, all from the same MAC address. Well, it actually might not do it from the same MAC address, but it's gonna broadcast a bunch of fake access points. And let's see if maybe Kismet is able to detect it. Now, this is typically able to detect like a Wi-Fi pineapple that's doing the same type of behavior. But in this case, I believe that this program is designed to create a new fake MAC address for every fake network. And that will probably get around the alerts here, which I don't see an alert. So I think that we're, we're flying under the radar here, even though, as you can see, never gonna give you up, never gonna say goodbye. These are obviously fake networks that we're creating, and Kismet isn't really sure that these are fake networks because they all have a different MAC address. This attack looks like it's going pretty well, and we're able to make it pretty convincing that Kismet's not able to, to see what's going on, but we were able to prove pretty definitively that Kismet can detect some of these common attacks, like the deauthentication attack, and that's what that alert right here was talking about. So very cool to see Kismet being on top of these sorts of attacks. So if you're curious that maybe your neighbor or something is attacking you, you could very quickly see whether or not you are really under attack by running Kismet on a Raspberry Pi. And like I said, I'm on my MacBook Pro connected over the same network, uh, just looking at this over a browser. So that's really how far these sorts of signals intelligence platforms have come. Kismet can also do attacks, right? No, Kismet is completely passive. So okay. Kismet is best described as like a a passive signals intelligence platform that allows you to see relationships and some types of attacks in progress. Although, um, it, so it can do a lot, but it is not a active platform, meaning it's not actually sending out any platforms in order to do what it does, which is great because if you're somebody who's worried about getting caught, um, running Kismet, for example, on a Raspberry Pi while you're walking through like a sensitive area is not gonna be detected <laughs> because um, great, the yeah. Raspberry Pi isn't putting out any packets. So it's just passively listening. Exactly.